Hello and welcome back to our Minotaur Berserker tutorial. Uh, when last we left, uh, what was his name? Mugaroth, I think. And again, I'm sorry for the loudness of the keyboard. It, I'm staring at my chiclet keyboard right now. It's it's depressing. The uh, W and uh, E keys are off. And every time I try and fool around with it, one of the pieces goes flying around. So I'm going to have to make do with this... with this uh, mechanical keyboard for now. Rest assured I will get it fixed, but I just don't feel like fiddling with it right now. And I can't find... I w This is in alphabetical order, isn't it? Yeah, there's I. Um, but I thought I saw him right at the top. It isn't in alphabetical order. There he is. Okay. We're at level 7, and we left him in the temple. Uh, the temple is, is your first check. It's your first challenge. When new players can consistently reach the temple, they should be pleased with their progress. Um, the next check would be finding the entrance to the lair. I forgot to mention in the last video that if you press question mark, question mark, it will give you a list of all the keys. So you can go through the, that and learn. And I just wanted to see where... Because I forget the keys myself often when I don't use them. And I wanted to see what dungeon overview is. Dungeon overview, where is it? I, I don't really use it too often. Add macro. Dump character. I think it's control O, actually. Yes, it is. Okay. Control O. And I didn't see it on the list. It's got to be there somewhere. So we're on the temple. As we can see, it is dungeon level 5. When you press control O, it will tell you if you have actually completed the level or not, or at least uh, reached that level or not. We see we're on level 5. These are all the altars we found, and all the altars are represented in the temple, so we found them all. How's our training going? We are still training axes and armor, and that's fine. Um, I mentioned earlier that you should train a secondary skill. I usually do. You do not have to. Um, you're perfectly fine to win a three rune victory with fighting axes and armor only. So if you wish, you can stick with that. I am expecting to get a two-handed axe in the future. If I wanted to stay with a one-handed axe, I could train up shields, which would give me more defensive power. If I wanted to, I could train bows or slings or throwing as a secondary skill. And I think if your skill gets high enough, I think Trog grants you armor as well. And I believe the skill level is 7 for that. So, although I'm not entirely sure of this, I know it's true of Okawaru. Um, and I'm pretty sure Trog gives you ammunition as well. So he will possibly supply you with ammunition if you decide to if you decide to do a secondary skill with a ranged attack uh, but it's not necessary if you want just keep pumping your experience into axes armor and fighting fighting will increase your hit points I'm not doing it at the moment uh, because with every level increase you get hit points as well and I just don't need them yet and it's most important to get axes up as quickly as possible. We have unidentified potions. It's always best to identify your potions as quickly as possible. Um, you can quaff your potions if you have already found a potion of mutation. If you want to take the chance to get mutated, you can always try that too. And it's always fun to be mutated. When we look at our potion list, um, we see a couple of things here. First, F. We have seven of those. That is almost assuredly uh, a curing potion. Also, we see Q. Uh, one of them has been tried by a monster. That is almost assuredly a healing potion. 
some of the most valuable potions to identify are also the rarest, so we will try you, the Slimy Silvery Potion. Potion of Magic, which is entirely useless for us at this moment, because Trog hates magic. So we drop it. I'm going to save one identi identity scroll, and we will identify a the brown potion. Potion of Slowing, we'll drop that as well. In looking at my armor, I is for inventory, by the way, if you want to just look at your inventory. Sometimes it's too big to fit on one screen, you have to use the arrow keys to uh, scroll. The fire dragon armor versus the scale mail. I hate to say it, but at this moment, the scale mail is a better choice because of the plus three damage. So we're going to put that back on. You can press W from the regular screen to wear armor, or you can go from the inventory screen as you see down there in blue. You have the option to wear and drop. So let's keep the fire dragon armor, but we'll wear the scale mail for now. And I think we will see soon enough it will recurse itself. We're also going to try this wooden wand and see what it is. It's a wand of flame. At this stage in the game, that is still somewhat viable, so we'll keep it. And onward we go. Let enemies come to you, even when they're slow. And this guy should prove no problem. Nor should he. Okay, we have uh, not much to worry about, but a little something. There may be more orcs there. Stepping away will... If we step up to the right, that will give the orc wizard uh, space to blast us. He has a few spells. He can slow. He can turn invisible. And he has uh, flame and frost, the weaker versions of them. So let's just step back down. Um, if you'll notice, both monsters have a question mark right now. Uh, so they are aware that something's wrong, but they do not see us. I would like to, if there are any other orcs around, I would like to get them all. So I want to get their attention, and you do this by shouting. If you press T, it gives you um, sort of shouting options. Uh, m uh, many of these are are uh, commands to your followers so you can tell them to stop attacking to follow you to wait here to retreat or to attack a specific target or you can just press T again to shout and if you'll notice the question marks disappear and I'm glad I did that because there are two orcs uh, wizards so I'm going to step back and back one more and let them come to me he chose not to shoot me there and now we go and attack them. And they're all mopped up. Unfortunately, uh, oh, there's a rat corpse here, so we're going to eat it. So we automatically stopped butchering the corpse because a phantom appeared over there to the right. Uh, you press C, by the way, to butcher a corpse. I didn't go through all the key commands in the last video, uh, but I'll, I'll make a point to mention them once in a while. I tried to butcher the corpse again, and the phantom returned. They like to blink around a lot. Just let them come to you. And you'll eventually wear them down. There we go. They are pretty tough. They do hit pretty hard, as you've seen. They, he took about half my hit points down. We're at level 8 now. We got an agility point. I think a Minotaur gets... Uh, a random strength or agility every four levels, I believe. And that puts our dexterity up to 12. Uh, my dexterity point, I should have said. So I might decide to increase strength from now on. As I tried to point out earlier, it doesn't make as much of a difference as you'd think. It's a little counterintuitive to most video games. Strength does not increase your damage. It does a little bit. Um, and dexterity does as well but most of it is your skill in that weapon uh, we have the elf twins here 
uh, Dawan and uh, Duvesa. Dawan is a magic user. He has quite a few spells at his disposal. And uh, Duvesa is a berserker like me, although she is light armored and has a um, short sword. The short sword hits quickly. It is generally better to kill Duvesa first because if you kill Dawan, Duvesa will go berserk and you'll have more of a fight on your hands. Uh, probably the best way to handle this is just go to berserk, charge in there, and, and kill them both. I'm just going to duck behind the wall and try to hit them when they come around. There's Dawan. Um, we're going to let him. We're going to pass the turn. Just let him. Actually, we're not. We're going to hit him with the Wand of Flame. All right, that hit him and scared him off a little bit. And there's Duessa. Now we can ha engage her in melee combat. And it also effectively blocks Dawan from blasting us with magic. And as you can see, Duvesa is falling to our axe quite easily. If at any time I get into trouble during a fight like this, I can press A, question mark, and use one of my god powers. Uh, since my piety has increased, you will note that I have a few more god powers than I did when I last used them. There's burn spellbooks, of course. There's berserk, which you've already seen. There is trog's hand which gives you magic resistance and regeneration, which is fairly useful. If you're fighting a magic user, if you're heavily damaged and you're running away, you can always activate that and you will heal more quickly. Uh, there is also Brothers in Arms, which will summon um, usually a troll or an ogre, and they will be berserk status. Um, which is uh, a very good summoning spell. So essentially you have uh, an extra attack power Berserk, which is your bread and butter. When you do run into trouble, make sure that you can win the fight and make sure you're not going to get caught exhausted after you win the fight. So you have a retreat option, don't extend yourself too far, and you can uh, easily get by with that. Uh, Trog's Hand and Brothers in Arms requires piety as well as food. So they cannot be used as often uh, because you will lose piety each time you, you use them. So that's a little bit of a check to keep you from spamming those endlessly. So consider your options carefully and use them when it is opportune. Of course it's always better to use something rather than die. And that goes for consumables as well. If you have one heal potion left don't try to hang on to it. You might find others, you might not, but if you can put off death, put off death. You never know what's going to happen in the next turn of the dungeon. So let's continue to fight uh, Duvesa here. Uh, we've got them both now, but I'm not too worried about it. I think the next shot will kill Duvesa. And there she goes. Now, Dawan, I believe, has just hasted himself, but that's okay. He's very weak, so... Let's just chop him up with our axe. And I believe he's trying to... Uh, trying to melee attack me. Uh, we have one corpse. That one's corpse, so let's eat that. Would have been nice to sacrifice it, but... What can we do? There are more sacrifices here. In this situation, uh, I guess I could back off. I'm not too worried about the bat damaging me. I am, of course, going to attack the um, iguana first. So I passed a turn, let the iguana come to range. I'm just going to ignore the bat. The bat hit me, and I retaliated automatically. I didn't have to press a button. I just continued attacking the iguana. That is your minotaur reflex. So we sacrifice these corpses, get some piety, and move on. Now we have another unique uh, Mankari. He is somewhat dangerous. Um, he can smite you. I think the damage we have taken now came from the trap. Uh, Mankari smiting is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, it's a lot worse, of course, if you're a magic user or a character with a lot less in the way of hit points. Since you are a Minotaur of Trog, you're, you're built to take a little damage. I think I'm going to close the distance and go Berserk is my safest option. So we'll see how much damage I take on the way there. 
he stepped towards me as well, which is exactly what I wanted. He paused. I'm not sure what he did that turn. He cast a spell and sped up. I'll take another step towards him. Aha! He called upon the powers of darkness and uh, we have been smitten. And that's taken exactly half our health points. Uh, it's probably best now, since he's fast, he can outrun us. I doubt he'd do that. But it's probably best now just to go to Berserk and take him out. So to quickly do that, just press AA. He hit us again, but we got some bonus hit points for Berserking. And now we should be able to easily dispatch him. And it only took one hit. And it, that's uh, when you kill an, an undead mummy like Mankari. You uh, you automatically get cursed, and our armor is now cursed once more. But that's okay, since it was invariably going to curse again. Imps, the best way to take them out if you're not worried about them hitting you and killing you, just hold down tab. You know, follow them around and take them out. Uh, undead, generally, they can be tough. They can be a little over your level, uh, depending on what sort of character you are. If you're an Ice Mage, you have essentially nothing to damage them with until you get Throw Frost. However, Undead are slow. You can always outrun them, unless they're uh, a Dwarves or Dogs or a fast creature. So if you have trouble with Undead, just outrun them. There's some Orcs. I need some corpses to sacrifice and eat. Unfortunately, eating is going to take precedence right now. Okay. Once my piety hits five pips, I will get a gift from Trog. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to sacrifice too many yet. It's been a little bad um, luck-wise. We have another unidentified scroll. I might as well just read it now. Scroll of Noise. I'm glad I read it now and not on a dungeon that level that had not been cleared. So down we go again. Uh, when you descend a staircase, you get a free turn. Even though there is a spider right next to me and he has seen me, he's aware of me, I have the initial turn. I can climb back up the stairs. Um, and I believe it, it's nearly a free turn, so I don't think he'll follow me, but I'm just going to check. Yeah, he did. Okay. Um, but you do get one free turn. You notice it was... He did not... Nothing can attack you immediately upon descending the stairs. It is your turn when you climb down the stairs. So you always get the first option. Mimics at this stage of the game are pretty weak, although they do poison you. I could always pick up some darts, even though I have no skill in throwing whatsoever. Absolutely none. It's still worth having the option. I mean, darts still do damage. And these are exploding darts, which are... Probably some of the best darts to get. To throw a dart, you press F. You aim. It will aim automatically. You can correct the aim if you wish with the keyboard. And you press F again. And that will throw the dart. Like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let the snake come to me. Back off a little bit. The snakes are faster than you, so... Um, you're not going to be able to run away. But I have nothing to worry about. Um, potions. I can spend 15 on a potion of poison. Uh, I do not want the potion of poison, but I don't know what the potion of poison is. I have not identified it. This is essentially a free identify. I didn't have to do it. It's no big deal, but I've saved myself an identify scroll. Now I know I have three potions of poison, which I can drop. So sometimes it's worth the extra money to buy a potion when you haven't had any identified and that will auto-identify it for you. In this case, it saved me an identity, uh, identity scroll. Identity scrolls are worth more than 15 gold, so it was a good move. More unidentified potions here. Let's pick them up. Okay, I've got a big room full of orcs here. Um, 
As far as strategy goes, I, I can back off because I have an orc between me and the wizard. He can't shoot me. And I'm not really worried about the orc damaging me. Uh, if you'll see... If you, you take note of what weapon the orc has in his hand, you can sort of assess the damage he can possibly do to you. You notice this orc here is unarmed. I wouldn't have to worry about him. This one has a club. Big deal. Uh, this one has a hammer. He's probably the most dangerous one, but even a hammer is not going to hurt a minotaur in uh, decent armor too much. Even though my armor class is only 8, I was expecting it to go up a little more. But we are only on dungeon level 6 and at level 8, so I imagine it will eventually. Um, the orc hit me, uh, uh, did no damage, and I reflexively headbutt as well. It used to be thought that unarmed combat would increase your damage of your headbutt. It does not. Do not bother training it. Unless you're a Minotaur Monk, which is also a very nice character to play. Uh, now we have an invisible wizard beside us. Generally, you have a fairly massive uh, hit penalty attacking invisible creatures. Um, but he is trapped between us. There's nowhere for him to go. I think he can blink, but uh, he did exchange places with the orc. Uh, if you know where an invisible creature is, you can generally just kill him, as I think I did there. I did. Trog accepts your kill. Trog appreciates your killing of a magic user and reactivating auto pickup. That being said, there are some invisible creatures you do not want to mess with. It depends on their power and your power. This one is hasted. I believe he's hasted. But there was no problem to dispatch him. Um, you can see here that there are too many items to list, so it gives you a, a sort of little squiggly bit. Press GG to see everything on the ground and pick up whatever you want. I, I don't want anything, so I just press escape. I will, however, cut up the newt corpse, yes. And I'll leave the orc corpses. I will sacrifice them. And I will eat the newt corpse. Uh, we saw here a little puff of translocational energy. Uh, also, we can see in the description uh, the Crimson Imp blinks. I did not see him, but he left a little trail of where he was. Uh, again, all, all is clear, so I'm just going to hold down tab. I kill him right away. Another orc. As a weaker character, you should back away from a situation like this. You can get confused by them. As a minotaur, I'm probably alright to charge in. However, I don't know what else is around him. There could be a there could be an ogre here. There could be a centaur here. It could make, you know, a, a fairly reasonable situation a lot worse. So it's just best to back up, eat a magic dart, wait around the corner, and he'll eventually show up to get slaughtered. Aha! Uh -huh. As we can see, there was a fairly difficult creature there, an orc warrior, along with another orc, so let's just pass and let them come. The orc warrior has a battle axe, which might be a little better than my war axe. I think it is. It is a two-handed weapon, I believe, and the war axe is a one-handed weapon, so I could still use a shield with the war axe, but I can't with a battle axe. Um, you should, if you ever do, uh, decide to use a shield on a on a melee character you must start with a buckler and work your way up uh, I think that you want to I, it might depend on your character I, I again I, I don't have a lot of experience with this but you generally want to train your buckler up to five and then when you get a medium shield that should be trained up to 10 and a large shield I think is 15. Uh, because a shield will penalize your attack power and I believe it is at those levels where the penalty goes away so as counterintuitive as it is when you do start a, a fighter class 
which in all other video games is the standard and the easiest class to start with. In Crawl, that is not the case. It is a difficult class to start with. Um, it is much easier to be, I'd say, a gladiator or a, um, or a minotaur berserker or even a monk. Uh, as usual, the fewer skills you have to train, the better and the easier. That being said, Crawl is not an easy game. Don't expect to just pick up a Minotaur Berserker and win the first time. I'm going to let him come to us. I'm going to try to fight him uh, normally. We'll see who starts to win. If there is any chance I'm going to lose, my hunger status is fine. I'll go Berserk. He threw something at me. I will throw something back. He threw something at me. I will throw something back. I don't want to be the first to go into melee range or melee range. As long as I have known how to say melee, I still sometimes say melee. Funny how the brain works. Okay, my um, my wand is actually doing good damage. I'm, I'm quite surprised. Usually the weaker the wand, you see I've zapped it five times, the weaker the wand, the more charges you get. I'm expecting around 9 to 12 charges on this wand. And it's also a fairly useless wand. Uh, or it will quickly become fairly useless the deeper I delve in the dungeon so might as well use it up they will most assuredly be better wands the more you train your evocations the better your wands are and again I'm just playing it safe He's uh, now he's moved into range I get a free attack I will chop him um, what happened I hit him but did no damage he missed me, I headbutted him, but did no damage. You can read the details of combat there on the screen if you wish, or just use the visual representation of the damage bars. It's sometimes interesting to read the, uh, the text. And that proved to be no problem. He left an orc's chain mail. I will stick with my magic scale mail. Uh huh. A wizard statue. This is unusual to meet this early, and I'm not sure what he can do. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I, did I step in a teleport trap? Oh, I think the wizard statue cast teleport on me, and it took a couple turns to kick in. My best option here is to immediately attack the wizard statue. The only thing that concerns me is the wizard here. He's behind a couple orcs. This guy probably has darts or some sort of ranged weapon. I might have to employ a god power here. Uh, I'm going to take a step towards the wizard's statue and see what happens. That's okay. One more. That's okay. And we'll see what kind of damage he does. Significant. And note that I am retaliating at the orc behind me whenever he hits me. The wizard statue is proving to be tough. I am now in range of the orc wizard. There is the potential for a bad situation here. The potential has grown greater and still greater. However, the orc wizard is not uh, casting spells at me and is in uh, melee range so he might be employing melee attacks which is a foolish tactical move on his part I am much more afraid of his magic there we go and that got us quite a bit of experience we're up to level 7 uh, we're up to level 9 our axis is up to level 12 and our armor is up to level 7 that has actually given us quite a bit of experience so it was worth doing Although, you do not have to fight everything in Crawl. You could have walked away or run away. Uh, in that situation, I kind of had to do something. I, I was Either I'd have to walk a whole bunch of turns past a casting statue, or I'd have to run towards the orcs. It, I almost had no choice there but to, to kill the statue. I'm going to increase strength, and we're going to immediately attack the orc wizard. And he's gone. Now, I just remembered that that orc I attacked up here had an axe. Let's go see if it's still here. 
that's not it. I'm pressing GG to see everything on the pile. Um, they don't necessarily leave their weapons, and in this case, he did an Orcish Battle Axe. Okay, let's take a look. Let's go to our inventory. We can. Uh, oh, also, if you'll note, usually your weapons are not identified. If you have great skill in the weapon and use it, you will uh, identify it without um, using a scroll. And in this case, you will see that this is a plus zero, plus one uh, dwarven axe. The plus, the first number refers to your two hit bonus, the second to your damage bonus, so it does a little more damage. Um, you can press the letter corresponding to the weapon to read its description. Uh, the war axe is indeed a one-handed military axe with a long haft and a single-bladed head. Since I don't intend to use shields, the battle axe is a two-handed war axe with a formidable double-sided head. Uh, this is the better choice here. However, remember what I said in the last video about attack delays. Our accuracy rating is plus zero, so we get no penalty on the accuracy. Damage rating is 11, and the attack delay is 150. With the battle axe, our attack delay goes up to 170, so it is a slower weapon. However, that will be negated by our skill, and our damage rating is 15. Our accuracy rating is minus four, so it's harder to hit with. Nevertheless, it is a better choice. And I identified it immediately, and this, as with the War Axe, is a plus zero and plus one. Now I'm going to keep both. Uh, it is nearing this time that I'm going to be running into um, jellies, and jellies corrode your weapon. When I see a jelly, I will switch to my secondary weapon, sort of a throwaway weapon, and if that gets damaged, so be it, uh, so I can keep my Battle Axe pristine. Um, you've got to watch out for these guys. They do drain you um, sometimes. They often have very nice weapons. Unfortunately, none of them had a wa an axe. Uh, the video is running a little long. I'm going to clear, uh, finish off this floor, and then we'll leave it there. We've got ourselves... I'm going to dip, uh, nip in here and attack them one at a time. Okay. Uh, let's just, I'm not going to shout, they all see us. I'm going to pop around the corner here. They should follow us. Uh, one of them has an axe, that interests me. If you press X, you can press the arrow keys. It will, it will uh, put you into look mode. So you can press the arrow keys. If you go over a character and press V, it will give you a description about it. Um, as you're in look mode, you can hold down shift and move uh, uh, further, or you can, uh, one moment, okay, X, shift, num lock must be on, no, this happens sometimes, caps lock, should be able to move about the dungeon and see different things, but I've done something wrong, uh, let's focus on the battle at hand. I don't want to get drained, uh, so let's just go berserk and polish these guys off quickly. Caps lock is on. Berserk, and down they go. This has put me to near starving status. Now we have two battle axes. And now we're starving. Time to eat something. We'll make it a meat ration. And we'll rest until slow and exhausted goes away. Let's check out this battle axe. You never know how they're enchanted. It might even be a negative enchantment, but we will wield it for a little bit. And we identified it immediately. It's plus zero, plus zero. The orcish battle axe is a little better. Let's put it back. And we just continue to explore here, and it looks, uh huh. A Goliath beetle, they're very tough. They hit hard, but they're incredibly slow. I have an unidentified wand. You evoke a wand by pressing Control V, selecting the letter corresponding with the wand, in this case B. 
aiming and shooting. It's a wand of cold, much better than my other wand. I will keep it. We'll let him get near us, and we'll take him down. That's a lot harder to do with uh, weaker characters. We're doing great damage here. This is a sky beast. Never eat their corpses. They can turn invisible. They don't hit very hard. They do electrocute you a little bit. Um, and they are cowardly. He will probably go invisible and run away once I damage him enough. He's invisible. He's still there. I'm still trying to attack him. He's re reappeared. He's dead. Okay. Ooh. Frogs and a store. Prince Ribbit will blink around a little bit. He hits fairly hard, as you can see. Um, in this case, reptiles are susceptible to cold. I have a few options at this point. I can go berserk. I can back off a little bit and activate Trog's hand and restore some hit points. I haven't taken that much damage, but it's starting to get to be a bit of a concern. It would be more of a concern if the if the uh, secondary frog wasn't so damaged. Um, in this case, I think it's best to use the Wand of Cold. You don't have to shoot at the first guy. You can uh, you can shoot right through both of them. And there we go. Now that that frog is dead, I will continue to fight Prince Ribbit, and I will go berserk if I need to. Okay, he's backed off a little bit. We're going to let him come to us. And we have killed him. Prince Ribbit is actually a human. In frog's form. Where have I heard that before? Okay, we have continuing to be attacked by orcs, but we'll just funnel them in there, and orcs are not much of a concern, even if I am damaged. They had a war axe and a hand axe. I'm not interested, but we'll sacrifice the corpses. And we'll sacrifice this one as well. And let's see what's in the store. Stores are a little more interesting when you're a melee class because there's just more stuff to buy and to try on. In this case, there's nothing I want. A box of beasts um, might be interesting to play around with. You can open it and it summons beasts. I'm not sure if they're necessarily friendly or not. Some of them might be. And it looks like we are just about finished this level. I'm, I'll duck around the corner. Those stones are beginning to hurt. And I'm not sure where that troll came from. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, the troll will hit very hard. Undead does not have a, uh, a damage indicator, but he can't take much more battle axing. That was a foolish play on my part. I should have been more aware there, and I shouldn't have taken that much damage, but I was fairly sure just with experience. Yes, press X and hold down Shift, and you can move around the dungeon. And that's useful if you want to know where you have to flee to. So we have finished off level 6 of the dungeon. And we'll leave it here for now to do a re quick recap. Our skills have gone up. We're still only training axes and armor. Our armor class, if you'll notice, has gone up to 9. We have an unidentified scroll, which we will read. We have enchanted our weapon with that and now it is a plus zero plus two battle axe enchant weapon one refers to your two hits enchant weapon two refers to the uh, damage enchant weapon three does both um, vorpal if you get a vorpal scroll if you have a uh, temporary brand on your weapon like fire or cold it will infuse that with your weapon and stay a fire axe or a cold axe after you use the Vorpal Scroll. Uh, if you have no brand on it, it will decrease the weapon delay, thus making it a faster weapon. I just noticed this, but I've also found a ring. Um, I'm just going to try it on. The best ring um, a melee class can hope for is a ring of slaying. We don't know what it is, so we will identify it. Protection for magic. 
is uh, viable on a melee class and I get three identifiers with the scroll so I'm going to identify the potions um, the potions are a concern your consumables are important especially I'd say more important at the early stages um, because you can be killed more easily it's a tactical error not to have identified more potions at this point but I didn't really have a chance as I have not found too many scrolls I am not at all excited about random potion quaffing however I do have one advantage in that I am almost 100% certain that F is curing and Q is uh, healing so if I have to heal up in a pinch I know what to do so let's leave it here for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has helped new players understand a little more about Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Bye-bye for now. See you next time.